Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome to GV247, the Global Vision Channel. Now my name is Deborah Menelos, my husband Stuart is still busy in the studio working on a new documentary that we're making. But we'd both like to thank all of you who are upholding us in prayer. It helps us keep going through the various trials and tribulations we're undergoing at the moment as the Lord searches our hearts to see if we're even found worthy of sharing in his sufferings. Because nothing that we undergo in the West can compare to what's happening to our brothers and sisters in other countries. However, we are sincerely thankful for the many saints around the world who have sent so many messages and what has been encouraging to see is the godliness and sound counsel and support. So, to uplift us all, we're continuing our Crown of Life series with the testimonies of dear brothers and sisters in Christ, all who have a different story to tell that we hope will encourage and uplift you. Now, as I've explained previously, so many of you are no longer able to go to traditional church because of wrong teaching and you're experiencing what the Bible refers to as apostasy, one of the most prevalent signs of the times eschatologically, with a great falling away from biblical truth. Now, this has meant that much of the Church of Jesus Christ, sometimes known as the remnant, Bible-believing Christians who don't want to compromise what the Bible teaches, has gone full circle and it's reverted back to what it was originally the ecclesia in greek the called out ones who meet together in houses to study the bible worship and have a good fellowship which is more easily facilitated because house church contains smaller groups now accountability is all important so we submit to one another in love fellowshipping with other churches so we can all encourage and help one another in our walk with the lord Many of our programmes have made the point clear that without love, we are nothing. And for our church, the scripture about us dwelling together in unity, which pleases God so much, is always uppermost in our minds, as we can read in Psalm 133. So as you will know from our programmes, love and discipleship have to be the bedrock. And the servant heart is essential for leadership in particular. Now this week I have Shona Gawthorne with me and she's a precious sister in the Lord who I've known for many years. In fact, our first film about Bible prophecy called Cup of Trembling Countdown to Armageddon with Dave Hunt and Friends was premiered in her home in front of friends and family. So that was quite an event, wasn't it Shona? Yes, what? it was. <laughs> <laughs> you offered to, to host that for us, but what was it that attracted you to the subject of Bible prophecy first? Well, I hadn't really known much about it, to be honest. Um, I had been a Christian for 10, 12 years at that time, mm -hmm. but it wasn't foremost in the teaching mm -hmm. that in the, the, the places I, I was. Mm -hmm. And you had come across my path, and I don't remember now actually how that came about, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I remember being gripped by mm -hmm. the things that you would share with us. And we went to a number of things together, and I remember it being a very exciting time in my Christian life. Mm -hmm. Really exciting. Mm -hmm. I think it was probably one of the first or earliest British films that had been made on the subject of Bible prophecy. And to think it was premiered in a wee village mm -hmm. in Scotland, it's just absolutely wonderful. Now Shona, you know we're doing this series, you've been watching the others mm -hmm. being interviewed. Um, just to come alongside and encourage others. So tell us or tell the viewers a little bit about your walk. How did you come to become a Christian? What was all that about? Well, it was a long time ago now. Um, I was in my late teens. I had grown up in a very loving home. Um, we had gone to church when I was a very little girl, but through circumstances, uh, caring for grandparents, um, that fell away. And I really thought nothing about the Lord at all until I was around 16 mm. and a Christian school friend of mine took me to a crusade in Edinburgh and um, I remember it being an interesting evening and at the end people were going forward and I thought this is a good thing to do and I went forward. The Lord's call was not on my life at that mm -hmm. time. I didn't feel him drawing me mm -hmm. but it seemed like a good thing to do and I'm sure the lady who counselled me at the end of the night realised that actually I wasn't anywhere close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. However, um, 
two or three years later, um, I met a man who later became my husband, who was a believer, and he started taking me to Bible studies mm -hmm. um, and Christian groups. And one day someone said to me, oh, you're a new Christian. It must be very exciting for you. And I remember smiling bravely and saying, oh, yes, and mm -hmm. thinking, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I believe in God, but I could hardly have described it as being exciting. And not long after that, um, we were having a conversation about films such as The Exorcist, mm -hmm. Damien. I never watched them, but, but um, we had a conversation about this and became aware of an oppressive feeling in the room, a sense. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember feeling quite fearful. Mm -hmm. And Alistair said to me, you know, you don't need to be afraid. And he explained the gospel again to me because I'd heard it a number of times in the weeks um, preceding this. And it had obviously just gone right over my head. And he explained it again. And um, in his flat, we were we had a dinner together and he um, led me to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, for real this for time. Real, uh -huh. For real, for real. And in the weeks after that, I remember thinking, am I really a Christian? Did it really happen? But even before I had begun to really understand the scriptures um, and, and start reading them in earnest, I became aware that my attitudes were changing, that I was suddenly Wonderful. thinking differently about things, mm -hmm. um, which was really, really encouraging for me. Mm -hmm. um, so you noticed a change. Um, what do you put that down to? Theologically, what happened to you? I would have said it was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who had come into me when I had given my life to the Lord mm -hmm. and he was starting to change me. Mm -hmm. He was starting to change my heart and my mind mm -hmm. um, out with the scriptures. And obviously then that was added in mm -hmm. and it took me a lot further. But, but in that initial spell, um, it was just him working in my life. I just, I just love hearing, you know, one of the things um, that we've noticed with, the, you know, the various people we come upon is there's all different church backgrounds. Mm. What kind of churches did you go to? Um, I was in two different churches. Mm -hmm. I was in a Brethren church mm -hmm. for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, my husband's family were missionaries mm -hmm. um, in, in Asia and that was his background, so that was where we went. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because of that, and there was a, a strong emphasis on the scriptures mm -hmm. and from his own background, so I was very blessed mm -hmm. in the early years, mm -hmm. um, being encouraged to read the scriptures for myself, to study them for myself, to be involved in Bible studies. Um, and I, I took those opportunities with both hands, mm -hmm. actually. Um, and. Um, after that, we were in a Baptist church mm -hmm. for a number of years, mm -hmm. um, both relatively, I'm saying small, 60 people, mm -hmm. maybe 50, mm -hmm. 60, 70 people mm -hmm. maximum. And even nowadays, yeah. that's quite large uh, in many cities, yes. certainly in the West. Now, now, Shona, I know your life's not been easy, but there's some wonderful testimonies. Tell us or tell, tell our viewers about the birth of your first child. Well, I've been thinking a lot about this recently because, of course, we've had a new baby in mm -hmm. our fellowship mm -hmm. um, and Gregor's 28 and um, I remember when I fell pregnant saying, I know this baby's from the Lord mm -hmm. and um, no matter what happens, I know that this baby's from the Lord and I remember praying as I was going into the hospital, Lord, may there be a good testimony for you in this uh, may I be a good witness um, and... Gregor was born diffic with difficulty and we were told um, 36 hours later that his condition was incompatible with life, is mm -hmm. the way they put it to us, and were blue lighted to the emergency uh, care. Um, and for the following few days, Gregor was literally fighting for his life mm -hmm. and they didn't know what was wrong. Um, but because um, my husband's family were overseas, we had a lot of connections overseas. Um, I was a very new Christian at the time, but um, so lots of people were praying and the Lord healed him mm -hmm. miraculously so that when the nurses went off on a long weekend and they left this baby in an incubator fighting for his life and they came back the following Tuesday and he was out and he was with me, they couldn't believe their eyes. Mm -hmm. 
they couldn't believe their eyes. It's been a wonderful, um, wonderful miracle. And he's, he's now a missionary as well. He's just gone In a far-off country. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Um, folks, just a wee interjection there, um, because some of you knew, well, the two programmes ago we had Maria Jarvie in. First week was James Jarvie, her husband, and Maria was heavily pregnant. And she, um, I was her birth partner, and that was didn't turn out the way we expected suddenly in an emergency section and little Rachel was born and there was it it was awful Um, she was short on oxygen she had an infection and a lot of people thought that she wouldn't come through the first 24 48 hours Um, the the nurses and the doctors did anyway but we were praying we were praying and we knew that she was a child of promise as well and Rachel got out of hospital uh, on Friday having been in for two weeks and is well and fighting fit and again to the glory of God mm. and we know God doesn't always heal but that's another program but um, I know that that brought back your memory the yes, memory of Gregor with yes, you it did. So you've been in two two good churches and life is moving on and you had three more wonderful children and then tragedy struck, didn't it? It did. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband was uh, killed um, in a road traffic accident on duty while he was in Edinburgh mm-hmm. um, when the children were ages between four and 13, mm-hmm. um, which is the thing that no one ever thinks about, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but but it happened. Um, and thinking about this interview today and understanding the importance of having a solid foundation before we came to that point that when real tragedy struck I had a foundation Mm -hmm. with the Lord and his word and Mm -hmm. I was grounded and and he saw me through Mm -hmm. Um, and we've been talking a lot about fellowship Mm -hmm. and the importance of fellowship and for a number of years because of circumstances, I find myself at home a lot of the time, mm-hmm. not able to have fellowship because my focus was the children mm-hmm. and and seeing to their needs. Um, and so it was a very difficult time and it was quite a lonely time. But I could see the Lord was teaching me lessons during those times um, mm-hmm. about the importance of clinging to him. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was reading this morning in Psalm 63 and it talks about my soul clings. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember a lot of clinging in mm-hmm. those years mm-hmm. um, and crying out to the Lord. Um, it um, was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing and he was with me and he took me through that. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's lovely to sit here now as I've been thinking about my mm-hmm. testimony. It's lovely to sit here now and to look back and see how he brought us from a really difficult place mm-hmm. right through to where I am now. Mm-hmm. And and part of that is not only seeing the children following the Lord um, and his gracious hand in their lives, but now being part of a church where I'm able to have fellowship mm-hmm. and and those relationships that in those days... I craved, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have. Now, out of tragedy can come really, really good things. And I mean, something you thought would never happen would be a husband, another husband to come along and love you. What happened there? Absolutely. Although I, I knew before she did. (laughs) (laughs) The Lord had shown me and it's just wonderful to see how he works in our lives. I know. But you have... You're married to Don. Married to Don. Don Gawthorne. Um, and he came from the Czech Republic. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. People used to say, do you think you'll ever marry again? And I I honestly didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mm-hmm. left it to the Lord. And yeah. he was very gracious in, mm-hmm. in allowing me to be content. Mm-hmm. But I used to joke with people and say, well, if the Lord intends for me to be married Mm -hmm. he'll have to bring someone to me because Mm -hmm. I'm stuck here Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he did (laughs) all the way from the Czech Republic that's just amazing Um, and Don is a a very beloved dear brother he's an elder in our church and uh, and a blessing to all so Shona um, and I know your testimony there's a lot lot more to it than that and and you know we're limited with time but you have seen the difference between larger churches albeit 60 or 70 and being part of a 
a very small a small house church. What what's the fundamental differences that you find there? And it, I'm asking you this really as an encouragement to others who are maybe meeting in small groups in home and thinking, oh, this isn't really church. Would you explain to the viewers what church is for you now? And that's not that your other ones were bad or yes. there was anything wrong with them, but just what it is now for you. I think it's the essence of the biblical church that mm -hmm. we read about mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. Yeah. It's about sharing your lives with one another um, in the scriptures and in prayer and worship, sometimes fasting. Mm -hmm. um, and this word has been mentioned a number of times in recent weeks on this programme, but unity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not just some light and fluffy concept. Mm -hmm. It's based in scripture. It's mm -hmm. based in truth, but in, in about coming together and sharing. Mm -hmm. And as a slightly older person with, with children who are practically grown up now, it's just one of the biggest joys for me is to sit around at that table and over, over a meal or having the Lord's Supper and worship and to look at the brothers and sisters and to see the Lord in them, mm. Mm. to actually see the Lord in them and see how he's working yeah. in their lives and, and Lord willing, mine too. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tremendous thing and to share that and there's accountability. Mm -hmm. in, in a bigger church, um, it's more difficult. And I remember many, many years ago in my early years, um, we would have a visit once a year from, from someone in the leadership and as long as you were attending church and you were involved in some way, that was okay. And I remember one particular year where I actually wasn't really close to the Lord at all, but nobody would have known. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. would have known. Um, just going through the motions. Just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. I knew the right, the right things to say. Mm -hmm. but, but in a smaller fellowship, you're with each other mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can't hide. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a wonderful challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and... And at the moment, um, I think the Lord is leading us in prayer mm -hmm. to pray more. And yeah. and yeah. for me, this has been a particular excitement mm -hmm. um, of being together as mm -hmm. sisters and the brothers pray mm -hmm. and we're mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and to see the Lord answering and doing his work. Yeah. Um, my mother often says, you get like the folk you live with. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're spending time with the Lord, then you become more like him. And I can yeah. see that in such a small environment. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lovely thing. It is great because the, the first three programmes in this particular series, Crown of Life, has been three of our our, our young ones, <laughs> hadn't they? Um, you know, n newer ones to the faith and really seeing the Lord at work. Uh, it's just been, it's been really humbling, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. Now, some people wonder, how does church work? when you're just a small house church. Do you want to give people an idea of how how does our meeting go? Okay, typically we'll come together and we'll start with a meal. Mm -hmm. um, by the end of our meal, we'll go round the table and we'll just share what the Lord's been doing in our lives since we last met. Some people don't have much to say, some people might have a lot to say. Um, and from there we move through and we have a time of worship, um, which is really the Lord takes over. Yeah. Um, everyone um, can be involved. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not everyone will be involved. It just depends on how the Holy Spirit leads. People will bring a reading. They'll bring a hymn. They'll bring sometimes an instruction, something from the scriptures, um, occasionally a word. Um, and at some point during that time, we'll break bread together, mm -hmm. which is always... It's really special. precious yeah. um, and last last fellowship um, my youngest was actually responsible for mm -hmm. praying for the bread and wine and that mm -hmm. was really special for me mm -hmm. um, and and we'll break bread together and then usually we'll have a time of um, corporate prayer after mm -hmm. that interceding for the needs of the fellowship and sometimes for things outside mm -hmm. um, so it's a it's a full and complete time together but but I can only say it's wonderful to be aware of the Lord's presence yeah. in such, sometimes a gentle way, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's challenging. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he does different things mm -hmm. every time we meet. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think our, our last meeting, I think most of us actually ended up really on our knees or mm-hmm. on our faces. Mm-hmm. Um, there's something about brokenness where the Holy Spirit, where the Lord can just work in a way that he can't do when you have a hard heart or you're, uh, and you don't even realise your heart is hard no. until you experience brokenness. Mm. And it always reminds me of, of the scripture, you know, from the strength, from the lion comes forth sweetness. Um, you know, the honey coming out of the, the, the lion's stomach. And it's true, isn't it? Out of, out of those difficult times and the many you've had in your life and many viewers have, can come forth a sweetness Absolutely. Uh, that is of the Lord. Now, Shona, we've actually had people asking if they can come away with us for <laughs> one of our church weekends away because they sound like fun. And they are fun. And they're full of love and warmth. And the Lord does so many things. But it's always about him, isn't it? Yes, now, it you've is. been you've been to four of them. I have. How about telling folks, <laughs> we've had some really interesting times, telling folks a little bit about what what happens on a weekend away. Now, this is just something we do once a year when we go to a very quiet, out-of-the-way place, all of us, and we all live under the one roof. And we think if we can abide each other for three nights, we're getting on well. And you, you tell Well, the first year, I think we were all in a little bit of fear and trepidation of how we were going to cope living with one another for three days um, and as you say this year was number four and what a progression we've seen mm. in those four years um, I think our first weekend there were three couples mm-hmm. and by this year we had there were six couples and um, each couple is responsible for bringing a task um, based on a theme every year we've had a theme mm-hmm. um, Listening to the Lord's voice was one year. Mm. Um, this year's theme was faith and obedience. And so every couple brought a task um, which they would set for the other uh, people who were there. Um, in addition to that, each person was invited to bring some kind of testimony. Mm. Um, it could be a word from the scriptures. It could be some personal testimony. Just something short to share with the other brothers and sisters who were there. We all shared with with meals, we took it in turns, um, and we had times of prayer, and we had times of worship, and we had some time on our own as well. Um, But there's a real value, I've never done this before, ever, and I found such a value in coming together and focusing on a particular subject. And and to see how the Lord, we'd all prayed beforehand Mm. um, about what we would do, what we would bring, and to see how the Lord gave people different things, mm-hmm. but it all came together. Yeah. And so by the end of the weekend, there was a real sense of completion yeah. and, and satisfaction at having been together, because that's joyful, but having knowing that we've met with the Lord mm. um, and feeling that he's spoken. Yeah. Um, and, and this year... Um, on the theme of obedience, I had something that was a real challenge for me Mm -hmm. and very glibly said, well, we're going away and we're looking at obedience. So if the Lord tells me such and such, then I will know that I'll have to do it. And that's exactly Mm -hmm. what he did. Um, But how marvellous that he he goes before and he leads. And I've seen that at each weekend that Mm -hmm. he's been involved at the heart of what we Mm -hmm. do and where we go and these times you hold on to them Mm. throughout the year Mm -hmm. and you can look back and you're enriched um -hmm. really very special thank you so much shona that was a a wonderful testimony to the the lord's work in the lives of his people now another reminder folks this monday is the lamplight fellowship study meeting and they continue their study on the subject of the New Testament. Of the, the conversion itself. So you get many cameos of how Christianity was presented and how Christianity spread and often faced opposition um, of an unreasonable kind and the amazing miracles that the early Christians performed. While the evangelistic journeys of Paul are well documented, specific data on the 12 apostles are in some cases difficult to verify. 
The following accounts are based on the possible writings of the Roman historian Eusebius of Caesarea and Hippolytus of Rome, said to be a disciple of Irenaeus, the disciple of Polycarp, the disciple of the Apostle John. The Apostle Peter would preach throughout Judea and Samaria, ending up in Rome, where he was crucified. John, son of Zebedee, went from Jerusalem, where in time he was banished by Emperor Domitian to the Isle of Patmos and is later said to have died in Ephesus. James, brother of John, preached in Jerusalem and was beheaded there by Herod the Tetrarch. The Apostle Andrew preached to the Scythians and Thracians and was crucified at Patri in Greece. Matthew Levi is said to have been martyred in Ethiopia by the sword. Bartholomew would travel extensively and preached in India where he was crucified. James, son of Alphaeus, preached in Jerusalem and was stoned to death by the Jews. Philip preached in Phrygia and was crucified in Hierapolis in the time of Emperor Domitian. Now, if you're not keeping up with the group, don't worry, you can start the course at any time. Our programmes are just there to stimulate conversation, although we have been told that many of you are following alongside and feel you've come to know all the people involved, which is really special. Next week, we'll have a new guest here in the studio sharing with you their journey and encouragement with our Saviour. So don't forget, you can use the cards, the GV247 cards, to let other know, other people know about the network. Um, you could write on the back of them and we can supply artwork and you just take it along to your printer to make them up for you. Or you can order them directly from us. So thank you again for all your correspondence. Remember, our sole aim is to encourage you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. Until next week, God bless. Bye-bye. This is GV247.TV, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on gv247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages we provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions.
We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years. And if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch.